We want to bring in Kathy Russ now. She's the director for the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. Great to have you with us, Kathy. Hi, Ronnie. Thanks for having me. Great to be you here. know, I, I'm sitting here thinking, like, what does it start? What is it like to start a new job such as yours <laughs> in the middle of a pandemic? Talk about challenges. Oh, my goodness. Well, um, yeah, I, I, well, I think to start, it's difficult to change jobs anyway sometimes. And I had been at the Troy Library for 13 and a half years. So even just leaving a place where I'd been for such a long time to come to a new job was was a, mentally kind of had to prepare for it. But to do that in the midst of a pandemic, um, I love it here. It's it's the best decision I ever made. I'm so happy. Um, nothing, you know, I enjoy Troy very much, but I'm really so happy to be here. Um, everybody has been wonderful to me. One of the challenges that I've had, though, is to meet people. You know, I would love to come to the station and do this in person. Um, our board meetings have been virtual. So I know our library board members, but and I've seen them individually in person. But to just be in a room with my library board would be a wonderful thing. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to meet as many people in the community as I would like just because of the pandemic. So um, so I think um, just becoming familiar, I'm the type to, I wanna know everything yesterday, um, you know, just, and I wanna know everybody yesterday. Um, and I like always to know my community. I like to know my patrons. I like to know who I'm serving. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working on it, but it's just been, it's just been a little bit slower. So I remember uh, first moving uh, to the community. Anytime I moved, the first thing I would do is go get a library card. Uh, and so um, when I moved to this area and going to the West Bloomfield Library, it was like, oh my gosh, this isn't a library. This is <laughs> like an escape, you know? They have the fireplace with the magazines and uh, you know, just all the research material that was available. And I will say uh, at the time I was working in Toledo and then Lansing, uh, checking out the audiobooks saved me. Uh, but what's it been? Uh, are your doors still open right now? Are they? Are you on limited hours? How is that working? Okay, that's that's a great question. I appreciate it very much because um, if you pay attention to the news or you know the library scene, I guess um, some libraries are open, some libraries are not open, some libraries are on limited service, and we're. I guess the the thing for the viewers and listeners to know is we're not all doing the same thing, and there are reasons for that. Um, you know, it just depends on the community. Some communities have closed their libraries because of the case surge. Um, and they feel it's safer to just do, say, curbside pickup. Um, the Troy Public Library is completely closed right now um, because they had an outbreak of COVID, so there are no services at all through Thursday. Um, I am happy to report that the West Bloomfield Library has been open consistently since June, and it, we did close a day or two here and there because um, of a COVID case, but I'm very pleased um, you know, our safety protocols are working. We're, you know, we're doing everything we can to keep our staff safe, to keep our patrons safe. I think one of the challenges, to be honest with you, um, is to make sure that the staff stays social distanced from each other. Bless you. Um, because what you don't want is for if a, if a staff member, you know, comes down with COVID and then transmits that to their coworkers, and then if it takes out a department, then we would have to close. And so, um, so we tried as much as we can to protect against that. Um, I think some of the challenges are that, um, you know, with vaccinations, you know, um, happening a lot more frequently and they're a lot more accessible, there is some, some desire on the part of the public to resume services as we did, you know, two years ago, you know, bring back programming, bring back the study rooms. I, we're not there yet. We're still asking people to limit their visits to about 45 minutes. We do allow people to use the computers for a 45 minute session. Um, we're not, you know, horrible timekeepers. If you stay 50 minutes or 55 minutes, we're not gonna be upset by that. But we wanna keep things moving so we don't encourage crowds, basically, in gatherings. So do you find that um, as you've been able to reopen that the computer services are more in demand than what they were before? Or um, are people just coming in to kind of get out of the house? Because, you know, there's nothing like going to the library and just walking along uh, the aisles and looking at all the titles. 
it's it's a peaceful environment. It, it is a place, and I think it always has been a place where people go to escape. You know, um, read a read a magazine, read a newspaper, browse for books, find a portal to another world in in an audio book or a, or a movie. Um, what we're seeing is uh, people will come in, they will browse, but they will. Um, grab what they need and, and keep on going. The computer, uh, the people who use the computers, we do have people who come in to use the computers, but not nearly to the volume that we used to. And I think a part of that is because over the last year, you know, the people who used to come and use the computers on a regular basis have had to find other, other options. And so, you know, whether they purchased a computer at home for their home or they're using a friend's or I don't, I, I don't know. Um, we, so we do have people coming in to use the computers, but not nearly to the level we used to. But we do still have people coming in to browse. And I think it's so important to, you know, you have to have human contact. <laughs> Sometimes you need to get out of your house. And, you know, even if it's talking to somebody behind plexiglass, you can still talk to another human being in a friendly and positive way. So with that, Kathy Russ with us here on the MegaCast. She's the director for the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the e-system. I remember uh, a few years ago, like uh, several years ago, checking out books through the e-book system. Uh, it seemed a little clunky back in the beginning, but I know things have changed. Are more and more people taking advantage of that service? Oh gosh, yes, yes. And actually we have um, two platforms. One is called Cloud Library. The other one is called Overdrive slash Libby. Um, Overdrive is the probably the clunkier of the two, but the advantage to Overdrive is that it does work with your Kindle. Um, the Cloud Library does not. So, um, so whatever your device is, we have something for you. And what we have even more is um, useful, our librarians who can help you <laughs> learn how to do that if you don't know how to do that and make it really, really, really easy for you. And just to throw a couple of statistics at you, if you don't mind, um, our overall circulation for eBooks is up 46% over last year. Wow. Um, yeah, so I mean, basically, you know, over to, you know, by, half doing, well, you know, I can't do the math in my head, but 46% over last year. And our overall circulation of all of our e materials and by that, I mean, not just eBooks, but we have e audiobooks. So instead of having those CDs that you used to have to swap out in the car, you can just Bluetooth an e audiobook and listen to something while you drive, which is, which is really cool. Um, I will say, unfortunately, I have a huge stack of uh, some of those CD uh, audiobooks because now a lot of cars don't even come with CD players. Right, right. Yep, yep. So, so it's kind of nice so you don't have to worry about swapping the CDs, but the circulation of e-materials is, oh, is up by 43%. And um, we have a couple of really cool... Um, they're e we call them e resources but they're databases which sometimes i think is a scary word for people because it sounds so scholarly and research based but we have something called brain hq and it's called the online headquarters for working out your brain and you know if you i'm sure you've read that you know crossword puzzles puzzles those sorts of things help can help stave off alzheimer's and dementia so this is kind of that online resource that you can use for fun activities that actually work out your brain. And that, um, that is up 442% in usage over last year. Isn't that amazing? That is absolutely incredible. So some people are taking advantage of this downtime to try to work their brain as well. And there's another one, um, Ancestry. If you're into family history, genealogy, that sort of thing, um, and, and especially looking for something to do in the midst of a pandemic, um, people have been coming online and using the Ancestry database. That usage is up 642% over last year. So those are the statistics a library director likes to see. We always <laughs> like to see people using the library. So they're using it, but they're using it in a different way. Yes. So going forward, how do you think that could shape uh, how you manage the library uh, for the next six months, maybe the next year? That's a great question. Um, and I think that that is a question that all library directors are, are um, I don't want to say struggling with because it's not a struggle, but we're all thinking about it because I think um, e People who have used the e-resources during the pandemic, um, I don't know that they would stop using them once things go back to normal. They're easy, they're fun, 
they're not scary, you know, they're, they're not intimidating. So I do expect a heavy usage of e-resources to continue and we will continue to put, to allocate money in the budget to those resources, you know, to keep a really robust collection of e-books and e-audio books. Um, we still wanna give love to the print though and the DVDs um, because I believe very strongly the library should have something for everyone. And you know, not everybody's into the E and that's okay. Um, so it's gonna be a balance and it's gonna be, you know, we'll have to watch very carefully to see where the usage is, but we will, I promise you, we will continue to have something for everybody. So uh, DVDs are a little bit easier to stock and store than VHS tapes. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we no more VHS tapes. <laughs> Uh, with that, um, if we could talk a little bit about children's programming, because we know uh, the library really is at the heart of so many families for their kids. Mm -hmm. And the, the young kids, that's where you went to really grow your passion for reading and so many of the programs. Do you anticipate them coming back um, anytime soon, which is hard to say because we're still in the middle of a surge here in Michigan? Right, and that's what's, the, and I really appreciate that question. That's what's hard. You know, when we plan our summer programs, this is the time we plan. Um, we usually plan March and April for our summer reading program. It's not easy to do because we are in the middle of this surge. And what we're not able to do right now is allow people to gather. For an indoor program, our limit is 25 people. I don't have a space to even have 25 people because I've got staff in some of our program rooms because of social distancing. So I don't have a space to allow an in-person program. And if we did, it would be very limited in number. And at a certain point, um, you know, for example, in one of our youth program rooms, if we can only have eight people in the program, and if the demand would be 100 people, you know, do we really want to upset 92 people because they can't get in? Um, what we're looking at for the summer is um, some alternative programming, you know, to see what we can do outside. Um, the Parks Department does a really fantastic job of, of programming for outdoor activities, and we're looking to partner with them. They've been very receptive to that and to see how we can work together on some of those things. And um, to just maybe offer people um, programming in a different way. One of the programs that I really like that um, is that the library offers is we have, um, it's called the Michigan Adventure Pass. And it provides families with free passes to um, a lot of Michigan's cultural attractions, to historic sites, to local parks. And this year the Metro Parks is getting in on that. So we'll have free passes to the Metro Parks. Oh, that is so fun. What a great uh, thing to be able to offer to the community. Yeah, so it, I mean, it's it's a little bit different, but it's something to do. What about uh, the book sale? <laughs> oh, actually, I have a meeting with the Friends of the Library this afternoon, and, and I hope that we talk about that because I'm hoping maybe we could do an outdoor book sale this summer. I would always go on the last day because uh, it was like, fill up the paper bag for $5. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and just so people know, uh, a lot of times you uh, buy a lot of the books and I would donate them to the homeless uh, because oh. they always need uh, books. They're looking for ways to escape. And um, so if you can go down and get a huge bag of books for five bucks, I mean, what a gift. Oh, that's wonderful. That's really wonderful. Well, I can tell you, I have at least two huge boxes of books in my house that I'm looking to donate somewhere <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> so that's a great idea. I, they they always enjoy it. Even if, uh, you know, when you're out driving around, I keep some in my car and uh, hand them out. Um, so uh, Kathy Russ with us. She's the director for the West Bloomfield Township Public Library. We so appreciate your time. Uh, anything maybe I didn't ask that you want to add before we say goodbye? Um, I guess just if people want to, you know, stay tuned and, um, you know, as, as things improve in the state of Michigan, we will look to, you know, try to open up at the library as much as we can. But I appreciate everybody's patience because truly the desire is to keep everybody safe, staff and patrons. And um, and we will, I think um, Portia said this, we're all in it together and, and we will get there, we will. So um, thanks for the opportunity though, Ronnie, to talk about all the great things at the library. Well, we uh, love having you. And I will say, just think how easy the next year is going to be on your job. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to seeing what West Bloomfield Library is like normal. <laughs> right go. now, this is normal, and I don't like this normal. We are all with you on that one. Hey, Kathy, oh, so uh, appreciate your time. Thank you again for taking time out of your day to be with us.
Thanks a lot, Ronnie. I'll see you next time.